folks, and welcome. Just the webcam there. Welcome to Unit One of journalism class if you're in my class you're watching this because we don't meet regularly if you're not in my class you just found a video and you're watching it and that's like great or whatever good for you um in this unit we're going to talk about kind of what news is we're going to talk about the basics so what news is what it looks like today what it used to look like and um i'll kind of run through what your assignments are going to be for this first unit so what y'all are going to do in this class and and what sort of more modern journalism is like is a term called backpack journalism and and we'll use this term a lot um the the content will use this term a lot and basically what this term means is that you're using everything at your disposal to tell a story so your cameraman your audio recorder your um your note taker are all here, right? Everything's there, but you still have that commitment to honor the truth and be as accurate as possible in your reporting and writing. So why does journalism matter? Well, the big thing is that the press is responsible for defining what is newsworthy. Now we'll talk later on in the semester about how that could be viewed as gatekeeping, right? This idea that, um, and it doesn't happen so much anymore with the internet and everyone sort of being able to, again, be a journalist. But um, back in the 80s and 90s, especially, the news organizations kind of decided what the news was. And they could decide then what they weren't going to cover. And that's an, a whole idea called the gatekeeping theory. We'll talk about it later on in the semester. But that right of the press being able to say what they want and define what the news is, is protected by the Constitution. How do we define the news, though? What's a free press? How do nations that don't enjoy the freedom of press and the freedom of speech deal with news? Well, news is, well, anything that's new. It's recent, new in some case. It's also significant and useful most of the time. Can I move my video around? I can't. Okay, sorry, it's cutting off some of the text there. But above all, it is critical to our democracy. Edmund Burke, a British politician, called journalism the fourth estate. You know how like um, American Congress has two houses and it's bicameral. Think of it as the third estate. News is there to keep everyone in line, to inform the public about what's going on. And it's another set of checks and balances in theory on the democratic process. So what are the news values? Now keep these in mind. Maybe write them down, take a picture of this screen because these are things that are going to show up a lot in your assignments. They're very important to our course. The news values, what makes something news? Timeliness, is it new, is it recent? Proximity, is it close to the audience and to you? Is it prominent, does it involve famous, important people? Um, impact, is it gonna affect me as the reader? Um, conflict, conflict always makes for a good story, whether it's a feud, whether it's a war, a battle, whatever. And the novelty, is it something interesting that you're not gonna hear every day? So consider the scenario, you're driving to work, you, you witness a fender bender. Is that newsworthy? No. Makes you a little bit late for your day if you gotta be a witness for the cops, but other than that, it's fine. What if the driver's a 10 year old boy who borrowed his mom's car? Now we have a news story. Cause it's novel, right? It might've shut down traffic. So that is now a news story. Let's look at an example. France declares war on Spain. Yeah, that's conflict right that's that's conflict and impact around the world for other for other things again not every news story has to just fit one news value they should fit more than one there's a water main break in town that's going to impact me locally so you've got impact and proximity i'm probably going to have to boil my water i'm going to need to know what roads are closed i'm going to need to know when it's safe to drink the water again so on the new york city mayor sprained his ankle while skating in central park I would argue this isn't a news story, but the book, the content says it's pr uh, prominence, right? It is a famous person. I guess it would be something that is mentioned. No one should ice skate ever. That's my opinion. The one time I ice skated, I broke my ankle. No one should ever do it. But that's just me. That's just me. I would be reading that story and be like, that's what he deserved. A tornado watch has been issued for the next 45 minutes. That's... um impact and and recentness right that is that we we have to know that information right now and it's proximity it's close it's literally close by 
a 7.4 earthquake rocks Southern California, injuring hundreds and destroying thousands of homes. Again, impact, huge impact um, on that. And a gorilla at the National Zoo lost its mate and is grief-stricken, not eating since last week. Well, that's novelty, right? A sad story. Usually we think of novelty stories as those stories that uh, are kind of fun, like the, the soft news, as we'll talk about later. That may not be one of them. This is a long timeline of the history of news. I wanted to point out a couple of things. In 1791, the First Amendment gets ratified, um, and that solidifies the right to free speech in America. Um, the newspapers start to get developed in the 1800s, the mid-1800s. William Randolph Hearst is a name we're probably going to mention more than once. He establishes huge newspapers in Boston and New York, and then quickly establishes newspapers in other major cities in the early 1900s. He becomes a billionaire, basically, by um, monopolizing the press, um, and then uses the press to suppress his enemies, to target them, and so on. If you've seen the movie Citizen Kane, um, Charles Kane is based on William Randolph Hearst. So, again, a, a guy... Too big for his own good, too big to fail, who ends up kind of living this pitiful life. In 1911, the Pulitzer Prize is established. In 41, we get TV broadcasting. In 1947, Meet the Press airs on NBC, where people from journalism talk to politicians. That show is still on today, making it one of the, if not the, I'd have to check the trivia notes there, uh, the longest running, one of the longest running shows on TV. Um, the war in Vietnam happens from 65 to 73, 73 and this greatly changes how the um, TV journalism community uh, affects war and talks about war and talks it and the relationship they have with war and the general public and the audience at home. And then we'll talk in a second about Watergate a huge moment for journalism, kind of the rock star moment for journalism in the Pentagon Papers as well. So there were all these trusted newsmen of the 50s and 60s. And unfortunately, I say newsmen because, yeah, um, there weren't a ton of female anchors until the 80s and 90s, unfortunately. Um, but they were the ones, they were in your house every night giving you fact that you could trust. So whether you were a Charles Cronkite, a David Brinkley, a, um, who's the other one? Edward R. Murrow person, each hassle, household sort of had an allegiance to one of these people and they would watch every night and get their information from those. Something starts to happen in the 50s and 60s called yellow journalism. It's that thing I talked about with William Randolph first, where journalism was starting to be used not necessarily in the most factual way. It would target people that the publisher didn't like, or it would target rival newspapers. Um, yellow journalism has kind of become a blanket term for any journalism that's maybe not super factual or 100% factual. Um, but now, even if you watch CNN, if you watch ESPN, right? Those, those of you who might want to go into sports at some point or just be sports fans, nothing's straight up fact. Facts are apparently boring in, in 2023 because what we want to do now is fact mixed with opinion. So you'll have your news item and then five minutes of people talking about it um, instead of just the news. Um, the way it used to be when I was a kid by galley. Um, so we have gotten this blurrier, murkier vision of what the news is. Um, some important things to note, in 1827, Freedom's Journal is established. 37 years later, the first African-American daily newspaper is established. Frederick Douglass and Ida B. Wells, crucial figures in the free press, but also the press of, um, also the, the African-American press as well. Um, okay, so Watergate. This is journalism's big rock star moment. So in 1972, there is a burglary at the Watergate Hotel. It's a hotel with like office spaces and all sorts of stuff. Those kinds of buildings don't exactly exist anymore. Maybe for this reason, because people are staying at this hotel. They're also living in apartments. They're also working in office buildings all in one complex. It's weird. But in 1972, there is a burglary at the Democratic National Committee headquarters 
at the Watergate Hotel. The idea was that a group of Richard Nixon supporters were going to go into the Democratic National Committee headquarters and find evidence that the Democratic National Committee was funding Fidel Castro. I just read a book on Watergate, so I know too much about this. They were going, that was their whole plan. Here's the weird part. President Nixon was polling incredibly well in that election. He was going to win. And yet they still felt they needed to do this. The burglary, the burglary, easy for me to say, goes wrong. Things get botched. Clues are left. Evidence is left behind. It's like halfway done. They don't even find any evidence that they were really even looking for. And these two Washington, D.C. beat reporters from the Washington Post, Bob Ward, Woodward and Carl Bernstein, end up looking into the case. And they keep digging and they keep digging. And they keep digging and they eventually find out that it was a whole group of Nixon supporters from the committee to reelect the president, which unfortunately acronyms out to creep. I can't make this up, folks. And that Nixon himself knew about the burglary and tried to help cover it up after the fact. The hearings for water for the Watergate case end up getting all aired on TV. Nixon gets reelected anyway. Like I said, he was going to win because this is like the timing doesn't work out for him to just like lose right away. This doesn't turn the tides of the election, but he ends up resigning in 1974 because he's about to be impeached by Congress and convicted of these crimes. It showed a mistrust in media at first. People thought that they were just bullying Nixon he really made the media out to be the villain in this case. And then it slowly crawls to other media outlets. It slowly becomes a story. And then everyone was like, Woodward and Bernstein were right all along. There's a fascinating book and movie called All the President's Men that chronicles this whole case and how they found the information and how they got someone who was on the inside to give them the information. Fascinating stuff. I highly um, encourage you to check it out. You do have a quiz about this as well. What makes something, what makes, it was supposed to catch typos. I apologize. What makes news hard or soft? And does it matter whether it's on TV, online, in print, or on TikTok? Don't they all say the same thing? Not necessarily. So print tends to focus on narrative. It's accompanied with photos. It has interviews, details, vivid language, and room for background information. Because you have a lot of times unlimited inches to print a story, right? You've got, you know, you only have so many pages in a paper, but they can kind of move things around and make it work. Um, with video, you're usually shorter. It's more composed. It's tightly wound. It's usually only a couple minutes long. And it tells that story with pictures and audio. The interviews still exist. But unless you're talking about a full on documentary or something that's planned to be longer, this is going to be a shorter soundbite filled interview. Radio, we'll talk later on about radio interviews. I encourage you to go to NPR and find like a radio interview because you have a lot of ambient sound, interviews that maybe last a little bit longer, totally meant to be heard. And then online, even the stuff that the content talks about is outdated. So when we talk about online journalism, we're going to be talking about it in a really amorphous way because it keeps changing. The fact that Facebook Live and Facebook Reels and TikToks and Instagram and now Twitter is changing. It's now called X as of the recording of this. Who knows what it will be called next year? Um, is Everything's changing so rapidly that we have to talk about it in kind of an ever-changing, malleable way. Um, there is a quiz 1.07 on... What is news and what isn't news? So press releases are things set out by companies and organizations to get news, um, you know, newspapers, media outlets to cover their stuff. I've sent out press releases before as a teacher. I said that used to be my job was to send out press releases to different um, media outlets for a college in Rensselaer, Indiana. The agenda is set by the client. You know, when I was writing press releases. I knew that I wanted to put us in the best light. I wanted to, I wanted to give the journalism outlet exactly the details I wanted and no more. I wanted to focus on the client rather than what the general public wanted to know. And it was absolutely biased toward the people who were paying me to write the press release. 
Whereas journalism has an agenda to the truth. The goal is to inform the public. The focus is on the public and we avoid bias. But both of these have leads, have news values, convey information and have quotes. So there's a weird sort of mix between the two, but it really it depends on is the press release, is the thing that you're looking at biased toward a company or an organization or a person, or is it avoiding that bias? What is hard news and what is soft news? So we, we call these, things, again, they've mixed and they've merged along the way, but really we still kind of have two separate entities, right? Hard news is local, international, national, analytical, business, and finance news. These are your hard facts, your numbers, your important weighty things. And then soft news are things like features, reviews, sports, humor, opinions and editorials, profiles, little snippets of articles that wind up in random places and editorials. So all of these are soft news and hard news. You may get asked to write different ones at different times. So make sure you do that. On the front page is your unit one to-do list, all right? There's multiple little writing assignments that you need to do with all of the um, instructions there and a couple quizzes. You have all semester to do those. You have as many attempts as you need to get assignments done. They will go in as a zero after the due date. So just make sure that you're keeping an eye on the due date, keeping an eye on your email for when I email you about assignments. Other than that, good luck on this first unit. Please let me know if you have any questions and uh, keep writing.